Hey everybody and welcome back to Amanda Marie NP, where here on my channel I am attempting to help you reach all of your healthcare goals. So go ahead and like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about what is a cholestistoma. And so if you are preparing for NP boards or studying for your nurse practitioner or LPN or RN education, this is going to be something that you're going to want to know about. So a cholestoma is an abnormal skin growth in the middle ear located behind the eardrum. It's a piece of skin that forms a cyst. It's not cancerous, which is obviously a great thing. However, it can accumulate and grow in size and can be locally destructive. It can create a place to harbor bacteria, which can then cause ear infections. So a cholecystoma may be congenital, so it's important to recognize this as a result of epithelial cell development, or it can be acquired, which is what we're actually talking about in this video from a result of having multiple chronic ear infections. Inflammation of the middle ear leads to poor drainage in the eustachian tube, and this creates a vacuum effect, pulling and stretching the tympanic membrane into the middle ear cavity. The stretched eardrum forms a cystic type pocket that fills with old skin cells and waste materials. This pocket then expands with infection and forms the cholecystoma. What does it look like? Well, you may have heard a cholecystoma described as a pearly or pearl-like structure. Also, it has been defined as looking almost like a cauliflower type growth versus the grayish type of colored tympanic membrane, which would be considered normal. It's a slow growing skin condition, of course, unless you're born with it. There can be ear drainage, also called otorrhea from the ear, which oftentimes you will see, especially in test questions, um, them describe this ear drainage as foul smelling. And the patient may have had recurrent ear infections, which actually led to the cholecystoma, or also known as frequent otitis media infections. The mass can eventually erode into the bones of the face and cause damage to cranial nerve 7. These patients will need to be referred to an otolaryngologist for surgical repair. That is the treatment for cholecystoma. Some sources say, and all of my references for this entire presentation will be at the very end, as well as some really awesome pictures, so stay tuned to the end of this video. Some sources say that a cholecystoma is skin movement which fails, and instead of the skin moving along the surface of the eardrum, the skin builds up, and then that retraction of the pocket or sac-like area starts to form, which is consisting of layers of dead skin. This forming fills with this area that is then prone to infection. Another source states that a cholecystoma has high prevalence in individuals with Turner syndrome, which is a chromosome abnormality, highlighting the need for earlier diagnosis and potential benefits of otoscopy training for pediatricians. Another source states that men are more prone to cholecystomas in comparison to women. Other symptoms of cholecystoma include, again, the foul-smelling fluid from the infected ear, enlarging cysts that creates a sense of pressure causing discomfort, severe pain in the affected ear, and swelling. They can also have hearing loss, dizziness, vertigo, and facial muscle paralysis occurs as a cyst grows unchecked, and again, those reoccurrent ear infections. This is a list of all of my sources, and as promised, here are some really cool images of cholecystomas, and the sites for these sources are on the sources slide. Here is some other awesome ones. You see tympanic membrane labeled here, and then the cholecystoma, and then the picture on the right, the arrow is pointing to the cholecystoma, and then there is a ruptured membrane there as well. So don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Come alongside me. Let me help you in all your healthcare-related goals. And yeah, I will see you in the next video, my friends.